everyone's going to understand it before we get any further. This is an unwitnessed arrest. It's got multiple significant factors. The rigor mortis flawed. I think it should be on the detail. A deranged man viciously murdered his online girlfriend after she flew halfway around the world just to be with him. Ashley Wadsworth and Jack Seppel had been chatting online for over eight years. Ashley believed that she had found her soulmate, and despite her family's worries, she traveled from Canada to the UK to be with him. My plane, I've got TV, blanket, pillow, water space and it's huge but jack wasn't the man he pretended to be and when she figured that out she sent a frantic message to her friend saying i need your help it's an emergency please tragically by the time her friend saw her plea it was already too late when those officers went through that door they would have immediately seen into the bedroom um jack seppel on the bed with ashley laying next to him and and there was a large quantity of in that bedroom. It, it was a, it was a truly gruesome scene. The details in this case are truly chilling and will leave you questioning how well you know the person you're chatting with. Could they be hiding something deadly? But first, let's look at Ashley's story. Ready? <laughs> This. Born in July 2002, Ashley Ann Wadsworth was a beautiful, outgoing, and adventurous young woman from Vernon, British Columbia. She was the younger of two sisters and was raised by her parents, Ken and Christy, who, even after parting ways, were able to put their differences aside and provide a stable environment for their daughters. Growing up, Ashley lived with her mother and older sister, Haley. She was a happy young girl who loved horse riding, skiing, and boating. And like most girls her age, she was also super into social media and would make cute, funny videos with her friends and family. Ashley was also passionate about traveling and dreamed of exploring cities and countries beyond her hometown, especially the UK. But this dream didn't come out of nowhere. When Ashley was about 12 years old, a friend introduced her to an English boy she met online named Jack Seppel. Jack was 16 and lived halfway across the world, which only fueled Ashley's curiosity and her desire to experience life abroad. While Ashley was outgoing and full of life, Jack was more reserved, spending most of his time on video games and social media. Their three and a half year age difference didn't seem like a big deal then, since they were only online friends. They chatted on and off for several years with their bond growing deeper each time. However, their relationship didn't become serious until Ashley turned 16 in 2018. They started talking every day, with Jack even sending her random gifts from England, such as clothes, jewelry, teddy bears, a purse, and sometimes even money. At first, Ashley's mom was a bit cautious about this growing relationship worried that someone else might be behind the photos of the teenager. But her worries eased once Ashley and Jack started FaceTiming in the family living room. She'd even say hi to Jack now and then as she passed by. Jack came across as a respectful, decent guy, and the whole family really liked him. Despite having never met him in person, his face and his name were a regular part of the Wadsworth household. He presented himself pretty well to like my mother and I. Like if she was talking to him, I'd be like, oh, hi, Jack, and I'd ask him about England and loved his accent. Ashley was so head over heels for Jack that all she wanted was to be with him. She even asked her mom if she could go to England to visit him, but of course her mom said no way. I mean, who is letting their 16-year-old fly across the world to meet a guy they've only talked to online? But like any love-struck teenager, Ashley didn't see it as her mom looking out for her safety. In her mind, Jack was her one true love, and her mom was just keeping her from being happy. So she made up her mind to wait until she turned 18, and then her parents wouldn't be able to say no. That's exactly what happened, and unfortunately there was was nothing her family could do to stop her from taking steps that would cost her her life. 
Now, although Jack tried to present himself as the perfect gentleman online, his true colors would sometimes slip out. He got super jealous of Ashley, often accusing her of cheating with one of her friends in Vernon. Their arguments would get so intense that Ashley would sometimes block him to stop him from calling or texting. But that didn't stop him for long. Jack would create new social media accounts to reach her or even contact her sister and friends, knowing they'd pass the message to Ashley. Some of her friends thought Jack was obsessed, but Ashley always defended him, saying he was just passionate. So passionate that he even got her name tattooed on his arm as a sign of his undying love. But here's the twist. While Jack couldn't stand the idea of Ashley even talking to other guys, he was openly dating other girls the whole time. And get this, some of the girls actually reached out to Ashley because she apparently was the favorite. And it gets crazier. One of these girls once called Ashley saying Jack had locked her in his house and wouldn't let her leave. She was begging Ashley to talk to him and calm him down so she could escape. What a sicko. This should have been a major red flag for Ashley, but being young and naive, she didn't see it. Plus, Jack was a smooth talker. Every time Ashley tried to break things off, he'd apologize, insisting that she was the only girl that he loved. By 18, Ashley had been accepted into college and was becoming quite religious as a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. She was also working part-time at Burger King to save money for her trip to the UK. And by November 2021, Ashley had everything ready, her six-month visa, a plane ticket, and her heart set on meeting the love of her life. Her family, though skeptical, tried to be supportive. Her mom, Christy, even spoke with Jack, asking him to look out for her daughter, to which he replied he'd guard her with his life. On November 12th, 2021, Ashley said her final goodbyes to her family, and her dad drove her to the airport. Her parents were, of course, worried about her, but there was nothing left that they could do to stop her or change her mind. Her mom tried to reassure herself, thinking, the worst that could happen is she'll go, they won't work out, and she'll come back home. Little did she know Ashley would never return to her, at least not alive. My plane got TV, blanket, pillow, water, space, and it's huge. After a 10-hour flight, Ashley and Jack finally met in person, and it was a thrilling moment for both of them. Ashley moved into Jack's apartment in Northwest Kelmsford, and over the next few days, her friends and family saw her posting happy photos of her and Jack exploring places in Essex and London. In one post on January 11th, 2022, she wrote, All the photos, more coming, of my amazing trip to London with Jack and his parents for his birthday. So thankful for them. The couple looked so happy together that Ashley's family started to think maybe their worries had been for nothing. Ashley couldn't stop gushing about Jack to her family, saying she was everything she dreamed of, kind, thoughtful, caring. The next day, I'm like, how was your first night? Like, so what you got? And she's like, I fell asleep, and he picked me up and carried me and put me to bed. And yeah, so I thought, aw. And she's like, he's so kind, and, and we have such a good connection. It's, yeah. So she was really happy. But this was only a facade. Ashley was about to really find out who her boyfriend was. Oh, my time for coming back. This thing in my f head. I'm gonna f It's f head. I'm gonna f head. It's fing driving me crazy. I'm so fing hell. Yeah. Jack was definitely not a good guy. He had a history of violence, control issues, and a hot temper. By the age of 23, he had already racked up eight criminal convictions for things like online harassment, assault, and violating restraining orders, most of them involving ex-girlfriends. Two of his exes had even got restraining orders to keep him away. In one incident where he was 15, he met a girl online and took compromising pictures of her without her permission. When she broke up with him, he got revenge by posting the photos on social media for all to see. She filed a restraining order and blocked him, but just like he would later do with Ashley, he tried to contact her through her friends. He even sent her a creepy message saying, you are never going to get rid of me. Even if I have to go to prison over you, I'll see you soon and I will turn up wherever you live. For this, Jack received suspended detention sentence. 
but there's more. In another disturbing incident in 2020, Jack met a girl on Facebook who tried to break things off after realizing just how possessive and controlling he was. But Jack lost it and reportedly put his hands around her throat before locking her in the house. This is the same girl that had contacted Ashley, asking her to talk some sense into him. Luckily, she managed to sneak out the window. But it gets worse. Back in 2018, Jack's own mother had to file a restraining order against him. After a fight over his Xbox, he pushed her down and tore a door off its hinges. The restraining order banned him from coming near her home, but he wouldn't stay away. He continued harassing her, damaging her car, and breaking windows in her home. Things got so bad that his mom had to call the police, and Jack ended up spending eight weeks in a youth detention center. With a history like this, it was clear that Ashley was in serious danger. But she was so taken by Jack that she didn't see the truth until it was too late. Once the excitement of being together wore off, Ashley started to see some red flags. Jack didn't have a job. He lived off his mother, who lived nearby, and spent the day laying around the house doing nothing. Ashley couldn't get a job herself since she was only a tourist in the UK. She also noticed Jack had no friends. His whole world was basically social media and his game council. Then he began showing signs of being controlling, starting with getting upset about Ashley talking to one of the neighbors. This felt weird to her, especially especially since she was a social person who loved being around others. But it didn't stop there. Over Christmas, it became clear that Jack had serious problems. His mood swings were all over the place, and one day he even overdosed, forcing Ashley to call an ambulance. After he left the hospital, that's when things took a really dark turn. People around him noticed that his behavior had become different, especially when he was with Ashley. He would not allow her to go to church or talk to anyone, even her family. He had taken control of her social media, changed her passwords, deleted her posts, and only let her reach out to people in Canada when he approved. When she did talk to her family, she had to whisper so Jack wouldn't hear. Even from 4,500 miles away, her family could sense something was wrong. Ashley told them Jack had even hit her with a glass. Her family was understandably frantic, feeling powerless with her being so far away. Ashley knew things were bad and was making video diaries to document each incident and injury. But when her family urged her to come home, she insisted she was fine and refused to leave. Then on the morning of February 1st, 2022, a neighbor heard a scream coming from Ashley's apartment. Seconds later, Ashley showed up at their door crying barefoot and bleeding from a cut on her hand. She explained that Jack had a her and even threw their kitten against the wall. All because she had been looking at a picture of another woman. Talk about insecure. Ashley told the neighbor that she was terrified that Jack might kill her. But like so many others in abusive relationships, she didn't want to call the police because she didn't want Jack to get locked up. So all the neighbor could do was try to talk to Jack. As always, Jack acted remorseful and promised things would be fine. He even apologized to Ashley. Then after the neighbor left, Ashley made the fateful decision to go back to Jack. Tragically, it would be the last time anyone saw her alive. About an hour later, another neighbor brought a package for Jack, which was delivered to her by mistake. While he was busy talking to her at the front door, Ashley took advantage of the situation and called her family from Jack's phone. She told them everything that was going on and said she wanted to go home. Christy was shocked when she discovered how things were going in her daughter's relationship with Jack. I said, enough. This is done. Ashley, you're coming home. Yes, mom. The family immediately booked Ashley a plane ticket for February 3rd. That was the earliest flight they could get due to the COVID tests. Christy warned Jack that she'd call the police if he hurt Ashley again. But that warning did nothing to stop what came next. As soon as Ashley hung up, Jack dropped the nice guy act and attacked her violently. At around 11.22 a.m., Ashley managed to grab Jack's phone long enough to send a desperate text to a few friends at the local Mormon church. I need your help. It's an emergency, please. 
A couple of hours later, the friends got a message saying everything was fine, but it wasn't from Ashley. Jack had sent it, trying to throw them off. But the friends were still worried, so they decided to go to Ashley's place and check for themselves. They pounded on the door and called her name but got no answer. Oddly enough, they could hear movement inside. That's when they knew something was wrong. And around 4 p.m., they called the police. I said, face with your emergency. Hi, we, one of our friends um, has been texting us that she's been in a domestic, that like they've had some abuse in her home. Um, okay, and this happening now, yeah? Yeah. What's your friend's name? Ashley Wadsworth. Her age? She's 19. Yeah, she's like 19 years of age. She's Canadian. Do you know Ashley's boyfriend's name? Jack. When the police showed up, they knocked and asked Jack to come out. They knew he was in there because they could see him through the window. But Jack wouldn't open up. Instead, he was on FaceTime with his sister, making a chilling confession. He had attacked Ashley with a knife. Now, unlike in the U.S., where police usually need a search warrant to enter, in England, they're allowed to go in without one if they think someone is in danger or a crime is happening. Nate's open the door. It's going to come in. Mate, open the door. You've got five seconds, otherwise we're kicking it in. So when Jack refused to open, they broke down the door and arrested him before searching around the apartment for Ashley. But tragically, it was too late. When they searched the bedroom, they found Ashley lying still on the bed, covered in red, soaked sheets. When those officers went through that door, they would have immediately seen into the bedroom um, Jack Seppel on the bed with Ashley laying next to him. And, and there was a large quantity of in that bedroom. It, it was a... It was a truly gruesome scene. Ashley had been stabbed over 90 times and there were marks around her neck. Jack tried to brush it off with a quick apology saying, I went psychotic, I'm sorry. He admitted to the gruesome murder and mentioned it happened a couple of hours ago. Paramedics rushed in and did everything they could to bring her back, but sadly, it was too late. Ashley was gone. But even more disturbing, around the time of the murder, Jack updated his Facebook profile with a photo of him and Ashley, captioning it, forever mine. Basically, he was saying no one else would ever have her because he had taken her life. How twisted is that? Forensic officers remain at the scene in Tennyson Road today. Essex police are continuing to investigate the events leading up to Miss Wadsworth's death earlier this week. Ashley's family woke up on the morning of February 1st to devastating news. Her dad, Ken Wadsworth, remembers the haunting moment he got the call. Ashley's sister, Haley, called him crying. My sister's dead. Ashley's dead. Ashley's dead. Jack's murdered her. Ken's heart broke into a million pieces as he ended the call and immediately reached out to the police in Canada, explaining he feared his daughter might be dead in England. Shortly after, an officer from Essex police called him and confirmed his worst fears. Your heart breaks. I went to the doctor and said, I'm having all these chest pains. They don't go away. And he said that it was heartache. It's really tough. That's your baby girl. And she's gone. There aren't any words to describe that sorrow. Ken and his wife, Charmaine, flew to the UK and managed paperwork to bring Ashley's body home. It was the worst moment of my life, he said. As she's, I'm trusting you with her, and he said, yeah, I'll guard her with my life. I'll keep her safe, I promise. I said, okay. If you do not have to say anything, it may harm the If you do not mention now something which you later rely on in court, Anything to say, maybe give it another look. You could just sign in this box here. In September 2022, Jack pled guilty to taking Ashley's life. The case against him was strong with several witnesses detailing his toxic behavior and the events leading up to the tragic murder. Evidence also included voice notes Ashley had sent to friends where you could hear Jack's disturbing threats to take her life. The judge described Jack's attack on Ashley as brutal and cowardly and called out his history of violent, controlling behavior toward multiple women. On October 10th, 2022, Jack was sentenced to life in prison with the possibility of parole after 23 years. Through his lawyers, he sent an apology note to Ashley's parents, but they doubted he truly felt remorse for what he'd done. This case is a chilling reminder of how dark online dating can turn. People aren't always who they claim to be behind the screen. You might think you know someone, trust them even, 
but they could be a hidden predator waiting to make you their next victim. But what are your thoughts? Have you ever felt unsure about someone you met online? Let me know in the comments and don't leave without checking out our next shocking video.